doing all right, Gumdrop? We're home. Welcome aboard the UC Vigilance. Did you have any questions before I escort you to the Commander? Yeah, listen to him, carefully. The Commander's a one-and-done kind of officer. In other words, he hates to repeat himself. Other than that, just observe standard military decorum, and it should keep you from serving any time on the ship's cleaning detail. I'm not authorized to divulge information about this vessel. Suffice to say, it's one of the toughest ships in the UC's arsenal. All right. This way, please. So, you're the vanguard that took down that Terramorph on Tau City. You've made quite an impression around here. Everyone upstairs is talking about it. Damn. That must have been one hell of a firefight. I almost regret missing out on all the fun. Of course, we don't normally see that kind of action on the Vigilance, but we have our moments. All right, Vanguard. Take the lift up to Ops. Commander Akande should be waiting for you. Good luck. Howdy. Okay. Hello. Yes. I'd like to brief you on the mission, so please pay attention. Ah, there you are. Commander Kibwe Kande, UC System. Glad to have you aboard. I was beginning to think you were having second thoughts about Commander Dwala's offer. UC Sysdev is a division of the UC Navy. While they handle big picture stuff, we deal specifically with pirates. Since you're already involved with the Vanguard, I don't have to underline how important your contribution will be to the security of our spaceways. It appears he certainly picked the right person for the job. So, now that you're part of the team, allow me to introduce you to your new home. This is the operation center of the UC Vigilance. Sysdef's nerve center dedicated to the destruction of the Crimson Fleet. Hmm, that's strange. According to your file, you've encountered them before. On Vectera, specifically. They were the pirates that attacked your mining outpost? I'm surprised you don't remember. We are currently in the Sol system, in deep orbit around Phobos. As to why, I'll explain momentarily. Which is precisely why we're taking a more clandestine approach. We need eyes and ears inside the Crimson Fleet. Someone who can feed us information, evidence, and expose their weaknesses. The catch is that you can't just knock on their front door and ask for an application. Getting inside is going to take some finesse. Good. I have just the right place for you to start. Our intelligence has managed to find a possible opening into the Crimson Fleet through Sersha Borden, one of their contacts. She works for the Trade Authority in Sidonia, so you'll be using a container of Aurora we've loaded on your ship to get her attention. Aurora is a Class A controlled substance that's illegal to transport outside of Neon, a city on Voli. Get caught with this stuff aboard a ship 
and you're looking at some serious fines. That's classified. Suffice to say that the smuggler who was previously holding it will be spending the rest of their life in prison. You'd better hope so. Sersha won't be easy to dupe. Once you bluff your way into the Crimson Fleet, then the operation proceeds to evidence gathering. That's where my second-in-command, Lieutenant Gillian Toft, comes into the picture. She'll explain everything you need to know. If I didn't have confidence in your abilities, I would have told Commander Tuala to send someone else. Remember, this entire operation rests on your ability to infiltrate the Crimson Fleet and bring us the evidence we need to take them down. I wouldn't expect any less. Look, before you begin, I want to make something perfectly clear. As an undercover operative for UC Sysdev, you'll be expected to follow our code of conduct and ethics. Allow yourself to stray too far off the path, and you stand a good chance of spiraling out of control. The Crimson Fleet doesn't follow the rules. They only abide by one thing, money. All of their morals and social graces fall by the wayside in pursuit of their greed. At first glance, this can appear quite enticing, so I'm warning you not to get lured into their trap. Think you can handle that? That's what I wanted to hear. Anyway, it's time to hand you over to Lieutenant Toft. She'll brief you about the details of the evidence-gathering portion of the operation. Now, get out of here, and good luck. That's easy to answer. You don't. We'll be monitoring your activities from the vigilance and attempting to keep it within your vicinity. When you feel you've gathered enough evidence and at the completion of your assignments, head back here for a debrief. Beyond that, you're completely on your own. All we know is that she's been with the Trade Authority for years, which means she's been privy to some seriously shady deals. She's shrewd, and she's diligent. The only reason we were able to connect her with the Crimson Fleet at all was thanks to an informant. I'm afraid she's the best lead we've got. For your own safety, nobody but myself and the crew of the Vigilance will be aware that you're working for the United Colonies. Basically, if you land in jail, you're going to have to deal with the fines. While you're running with the Crimson Fleet, you're undoubtedly going to be faced with some morally gray decisions. It's going to be difficult for you to weigh the consequences of pulling the trigger while maintaining your cover. Do what you have to do, but remember why you're out there in the first place. Then you do what you have to do. The Crimson Fleet has the potential to kill hundreds, even thousands of people per year. If it takes a few deaths to maintain your cover, then so be it. But only as an absolutely final resort. This is not a licensed killing spree. Understood? That's why I expect you to constantly seek alternative means to overcome your obstacles, rather than blowing holes in them. Look. I can see that you're struggling with this. So let me simplify this for you. If there's a route to your goal which doesn't involve killing innocent people, I'm urging you to follow that path. Use your instincts. I'm certain you'll do the right thing. Dismissed. Hello. All right, we don't have a lot of time, so I need you to listen up. While you're working undercover, it's imperative that you gather as much evidence as possible. If you find any records that look suspicious or incriminating, you bring it to me. Is that understood? 
Well, since it isn't every day we stumble across a criminal's fully written confession, we need to build a case against our suspects. The more evidence we acquire, the stronger our case becomes. And knowing the Crimson Fleet, they'll leave plenty of evidence for you to find. Well, you better. Commander Akande's entire operation is resting on your shoulders. I want data slates, computer downloads, handwritten notes. Hell, I'll take anything if it'll get those bastards thrown into the brig. For the sake of the settled systems, I hope you're right. That minor skirmish you had with them on Vectera was nothing compared to the death and destruction those pirates leave behind. If you've seen what I've seen, you'd understand why I'm pushing you so hard. That's all we're asking. Oh, before you go, there's one more thing. Commander Akande has authorized a credit disbursement for each piece of evidence that you return, as compensation for your efforts. Hmm? Yes. Commander Akande mentioned that when he proposed the idea. Lucky you. All right. We've loaded a container of Aurora into your ship's cargo hold. We're also providing you with a sample you can use to tease the goods. We've cleared your ship for launch. Proceed to Sidonia. Make contact with Searsha Bowden. And with any luck, she'll point you to the Crimson Fleet. That should do it. You're dismissed. We'll be keeping them close at hand until this operation is complete. So, we'll be holding them in the Vigilance's brig. If you're feeling particularly ruthless, you could always head down there and say hello. I'm sure they'll be thrilled to see you. Don't worry, the container's been registered with UC Security, so you shouldn't have any trouble. Even if you're scanned. Of course, if we find out you tried to sell it to someone outside the boundaries of this particular operation, well, I don't think I need to tell you the consequences of making that mistake. Not really, no. I've learned to keep my personal experiences separate from the job. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate that you care. It's just that I don't feel like now's an appropriate time to be discussing these things. Let's just stick to the job at hand and concentrate on the mission. But, uh, maybe we can talk about it some other time, okay? We'll be here if you need us.
Sounds like a plan. See you around. If you're here to buy or sell, you might want to talk to Octai. I'm busy. Octai and Bayar. He's the head of our Sidonia branch. If you want to do some trading, he's the one you need to be talking to. I'm busy. And by sensitive, I'm guessing you mean something you don't want UC security sticking their noses into. I can probably help you with that. What have you got for me? Hmm. Aurora, huh? Nice. A little too hot to handle, though. What else you got? The Trade Authority turning down contraband. Well, if that doesn't take the cake. Or not take the cake. Oh yeah. Well, I got some bad news for you, love. This location doesn't buy shit like that when you see security sitting a stone's throw from the front door. Of course, if there's a finder's fee you're offering, I might, well, bend the rules a little bit. You know, it's funny. Suddenly, I do remember someone who might be able to unload that stuff for you. My faith in the seedy underbelly of the settled systems is restored. There's a buddy of mine who runs with the Crimson Fleet. Goes by the name Adler Kemp. If he isn't passed out, you can find him killing the rest of his brain cells at the Broken Spear. Oh, and uh, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. Mm, all right. Hey, welcome to the Sidonia Trade Off. Mars is wrapped with resources, which means there's always going to be... Unless you're here to serve me another drink, you can turn around and walk away. Hey, why don't you say that a little louder? I don't think every single UC guard in Sidonia heard you! Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we can help you with this. If you've got a whole shipment of this stuff, you're going to need to move it fast. But you're going to have to do something for us first. You're a clever one, aren't you? Let's just say I have a certain influential affiliation. And leave it at that. Basically, you want that Aurora moved, I'm your guy. Right down to business, and no small talk. I like it. This whole thing's given me the worst sort of deja vu. If you want me to move that shipment for your pal here, you're going to do whatever the hell I want. You got that? Now listen up, because I'm not going to repeat myself. I need you to deal with a miner who's racked up a bunch of debt. He probably spent it all on booze, not that I blame him. Either way, I want that money back. What do I need to do here? Write you an instruction manual? You can do this loud, you can do this quiet. I don't care. I just want my goddamn money, and I want this guy to remember who he screwed over. Perfect. His name's Carl Fielding. I think you'll find him wandering around the Deimos Miners' quarters. Don't worry, you can't miss him. Just look for the most miserable looking guy in the entire place. I can help you with? Really? I wouldn't do that. Adler Kemp. 
who the heck is that? Adler, you said? Nope. I think you have me mixed up with someone else. Look, I'm tired. It's been a long day in the mines. I just want to go home, wash off the dust, and relax. This has been fun, though. Whatever. Uh, hey, now. <laughs> Take it easy there. Let me think about that person you mentioned. Uh, Adler, was it? Hmm? Oh, wait. You mean that Adler? Yeah, sorry. I thought you were talking about someone else. I told him I'd pay up next week when Deimos cuts our next profit share check. Uh, I'll even bring it to him personally. Hmm? Sound good? Yeah? Come on! Give me a break! What the... Look, I haven't got a single credit to spare right now. Okay? You can't squeeze blood from a stone. You know? Right? It's funny how whenever someone's there to collect the dead, everyone's as poor as a list dirt farmer. <sighs> I'm a miner for Deimos. It's not what I was hoping for out of life. But here I am. Yeah. It's a lousy company. Pays me a salary, but I depend on the profit-sharing bonuses to keep food on the table for my family. Hey, 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 now wait a second. Just because things are tough, and I might be spending my afternoons at the Spear, it doesn't mean I don't care about my family. Adler doesn't get to judge me. No, he's just a low-life pirate who thinks he can push everyone around. What games? Why are you doing this to me? I don't have the money. Sure, I, I guess I, I could ask for a seven-day shift. I don't know. Um, uh, well... I might be able to cash in a few of my Deimos shares. I suppose. It's just that... Well... I, I didn't have much of a choice. Please. Tell Adler I'm sorry for trying to wiggle out of the debt. I didn't have much of a choice. I knew that bum was holding out on me. He going to be a problem anymore? Or did he get the message? Nice. Nice! You're kind of a natural at this. Leaning on deadbeats comes easy to you. I like that. You know, if you like this kind of work, I can get you more. A lot more. You think you can handle running with my, uh... Associates. 
That's what I'm talking about. I like your style. All right. I'll call ahead and get a hold of Neva Mora. She's second to the big boss himself. Head out to Europa. You'll find her there. I suggest you listen to whatever she has to say. Oh, and I've taken care of that Aurora shipment for you, too. Don't spend all that cash in one place. Love the smell of getting back into the harness. Look who finally had Augustus show up. So, big shot. I hear Adler thinks you're good enough to join our crew. <laughs> you're funny. I hate funny. Remember that. So, before I put you to work, let's get everything out in the open. I don't know if Adler mentioned it, and for his sake, I hope he hasn't. But you aren't about to sign up with any average pirate crew. You're signing up with the Crimson Fleet. That's if you get through this little task I have planned for you. There's a medical supply ship called the Rigana, jumping into Enceladus's orbit. On board that ship, you'll find a traitor named Austin Rake. I want him dead. This job isn't about the loot. But I suppose every dog needs its scraps. Keep whatever worthless junk is on that ship. Just remember, the only thing that matters is that Rake dies. It's done when Rake stops breathing. Head back here when you're finished. And don't keep me waiting for long. You know, I've dealt with a lot of phony tough guys and trash-talking pirates in my time, and most of them aren't worth the oxygen. But I'll tell you right now, Neva, she's the real deal. sure what to make of you being here. If you wanted to kill us, you could have done that from your ship. If you wanted our cargo, we could have jettisoned it. I guess I should just stop talking and let you say your piece.
That is not something I am going to do, not until you reveal your intentions. As far as you are concerned, I am Austin Rake. You want him? You're going to have to kill me. Now, do you mind telling us what this is all about? I will not murder a man in cold blood. You will have to kill us all first. You really do not know which one of us is Rake, do you? And you do not seem to care either, which makes me think you really want to save him. Okay, I have idea. We can strike his name from Manifest, make it so he was never on board. Then, when we dock, we will leave him on this ship and deliver him to another port. That is fair. We do not want any part of the fleet. Is that all right with you, Austin? Do I have a choice? It does not appear you do. Well then, it is agreed. You go back to your ship and we will make sure Rake was never on ours. And in case any of your handlers get suspicious, here. We had an extra crate of supplies loaded, in case one got damaged. This should be proof you were not here to bargain. I thought we were dead. Can't believe it. If you ever get to the key, you better sleep with one eye open and two pistols loaded. The people of New Homestead will be grateful for these supplies. Clamps released. They're precious stable. Thrusters are a go. Ready. How are you? Time to see what you signed up for. 
I'm gonna upload the coordinates for our headquarters in the Crick system. Spacers call it the key, the fleet calls it home. Head out there as soon as you can. Don't keep me waiting long. Oh, that wasn't exactly an easy initiation, but at least they trust us. Not as far as they can throw us, but in time we'll shed those kilos. Commander Ikande wants to see you. Follow me. I had a friend on the Ragana. I hope I'll be able to see him next time we're on shore leave. Excuse me. Anything to report. We got the message from the Ragana about Austin Rick. We had him dropped off at a separate port, off the books. Suffice to say, he's got a lot to answer for. That's something we're looking into. But it doesn't seem like he knows much. He might be better served as bait. For now, we'll keep him in the brig. Perhaps you could pay him a visit there sometime? I'm sure he'd be pleased to see you. That's a smart line to follow. Part of this role you're playing means having to make hard choices. Just remember not to lose yourself in the part. I hate to say it. Sometimes folks gotta die. But this was not one of those situations. Oh, one more thing before we move on. For transparency's sake, you should know we were the ones that hired Ecliptic to attack Neva's ship. There was concern after what happened with the Regana that you might have trouble earning Neva's trust. Coming to her rescue ensured that would not be a problem. Let them remember. They have no idea who actually hired them. I'd suggest you spend less time worrying about us and more time being concerned with the task at hand. On that note, how did things go with Neva? Were you able to join the fleet? It's a dangerous plan, and you came awfully close to killing an innocent crew. Luckily, you have a good head on your shoulders, and did the right thing. Now it's time for the next phase of the mission. Our intel on Searsha was correct. After we received reports on your interaction with Adler Kemp, we picked up on your rendezvous with Neva Mora. Our files indicate she's second in command, so getting on a good side will ensure you get into the Crimson Fleet. Yes, you pass your first test and you're still alive. But before we get too confident, that either means she suspects nothing, or she intends to make an example of you later. Just remember, these are ruthless criminals, so don't let your guard down. And their ruthlessness is only surpassed by their cunning. You should proceed with caution, regardless of how well you think you've ingratiated yourself. 
So, what's next for you on Neva's agenda? Excellent. If you're heading to the Key, I assume you'll be meeting Delgado soon. Delgado is the leader of the Crimson Fleet. I have a profile here with some information on his background. You'll want to know the individual cadences of every member of the fleet, but Delgado's most of all. Ugh, no one said there was gonna be homework. I assure you, there is only information that is pertinent to the mission. Our dossiers are designed to be succinct. In any case, now that you're with the fleet, you'll be operating independently. We will shadow you eventually, but we'll need to maintain our distance for now, especially while you're on the key. This will also give us time to bolster our defenses, should we need to engage with the fleet in the future. Sir, on that note, shall we begin implementing the upgrade to our shields? Immediately, Lieutenant. Notify the engineers and relay the information to the crew. I hope your entry into the fleet has overcome any doubts you may have had regarding your mission. It certainly increased my estimates on success. Keep up the good work. We'll expect further reports. Dismissed. My checklist. That's my girl. Air pressure, seals, ship integrity, all good. on 40% of 10 versus 30. You wanted 4K, you got 4K. Not my problem. If you're stealing from me, you bet your ass it's your problem. <laughs> you kidding me? Way to make a mess in front of my new rook. Hey, steal from me and get caught. Better off dead. Sounds like you did the fleet a favor. Now toss this body out of an airlock before it turns into a damn air freshener. The hell took you so long? Forget how to grab jump or something? Please. It'd be one less sloppy rook whose mess I had to clean up. The last thing I need is another Austin rake getting cold feet. You want to leave the fleet? You pay the price. Not in credits, but in blood. I don't care. Time is money and you've wasted both. That ends today. Clear? But all that aside, you made it. So now you get to hear a nifty history lesson. Pencils ready? Good. This floating scrap heap you're standing on is called the Keep. Used to be an old UC Military Star Station, and now it's the fleet's base of operations. Might look a little beat up on the outside, but we keep it together. Sure did. Right out from under their noses. Way before you or I were born, though. We've held this station for a very long time. Don't worry. Delgado will tell you all about it. <laughs> you think? And that's only part of it. I'll let Delgado fill you in on the whole story. He tells it better anyway. But I can give you the short version while we walk the station. I'm sure the UC is happy with you guys rubbing their nose in their biggest, I mean, most monumental mistake. Anyway, I'll tell you all about the key. But it's better if I show you too. Follow me. All right, history time. So, the key is in orbit around Suvorov. That's the very same ice ball where the United Colonies built a supermax prison they call the Lock. 
The UC is so clever. Supermax prison, lock, key. Uh, cute, huh? Hello, everyone. I'm Gail Dunnigan of SSNN, and this is Galact Talk. My guest tonight is one of the most notorious criminals in the settled systems. His ruthlessness and desire for wealth has landed him squarely at the top of the wanted list for every major law enforcement agency in the galaxy. I am, of course, speaking of the self-appointed leader of the Crimson Fleet himself, Jasper Crix. Good evening, Mr. Crix. Good evening, Gail. Thank you for accepting my invitation. Yes, well, being blindfolded and then Graf jumped to what appears to be an abandoned mining facility isn't exactly what I call an invitation. Well, I'm sure you're not surprised that your request for an interview would come with some very specific conditions. Frankly, I was a bit surprised to receive any type of response at all. Would you mind telling me why you decided to do this interview? Because there comes a time in every pirate's life where they have to make an extremely important decision. Do they take a leap and become one of the most legendary pirates in history? Or do they simply sputter on, subsisting on freighters and deep space privateers? So are we to assume that you are taking the leap? That Jasper Crix is moving on to bigger and better things in his life? That's spot on, Gale. That's exactly why you're here. Interesting. Well then, would you mind sharing with us exactly what your particular leap entails? In due time. There's no rush. In fact, I'd say we have at least 12 hours before the authorities trace this broadcast. Plenty of time to discuss whatever you like. Oh. <laughs> All right then. Perhaps the best place to start this interview would be at the beginning of your career. Please, proceed. Everything the fleet needs right here. Of course, you've got to pay for it. Remember, on the key, credits are key. What the hell is this? All right, all right, hang on, Nev. Before you get pissed, I've got my hands full. Jasmine, sweetie, I'm trying to give a tour here. So you want to tell me why those damn doors are sealed? It's called a malfunction, you know. That thing I spend most of my day dealing with, believe me, my people are on it. Have a little faith for once. Aww. And you always, Angel. This here's Jasmine. You need anything for your ship, she's got you covered. We'll hit up the depot next since these doors have given out on us. So anyway, we were talking about the lock. About a hundred years ago, the prisoners down there rioted and took over the place. After stealing some ships, they were actually able to make it up here and took over the key. About time you brought us new blood, neighbor. I was getting tired of trading with the same old faces. You're just ticked everyone's getting wise to your ridiculous prices, Elutra. Anyway, welcome to the depot, Brooke, where you'll be lucky if these blood-sucking leeches don't bleed you completely dry. Whoa, whoa. It's not our fault that people don't appreciate how much it costs to get untraceable merchandise onto the key. Neva's just lining because she thinks she lost a ton of cash selling us a shipment of gear. She should have done her homework. Yeah, sure, laugh it up. I'll remember that next time I need something from you cheapskates. Let's move on. <clears throat> Back to my story. After the liberated prisoners grabbed the key, they established it as a base of operations and began pirating the spaceways. That was how the Crimson Fleet began. Of course, Jasper Crix had a lot to do with all that, but uh, we'll get to him later. Rook, meet Zuri, queen of the rare exports. If I don't have it, you don't need it. 
Neuroamps, blueprints. Hit her up and she'll take care of you. Speaking of which, you still owe me for that last purchase, Neva. It's like five figures. Don't make me collect it the hard way. <laughs> the hard way? Oh no. Rook, protect me from Zuri's vengeance. Enough of the bullshit, Zuri. I'll pay you when I pay you. Deal with it. Got a problem with that? Take it up with the boss. On the right, you've got Bradley from the Trade Authority. I'm sure you know the deal there. He'll buy pretty much anything, no matter how hot. Then we got our med bay on the left, run by the one and only Samina Mizra. She'll patch you up, if you've got the money. We don't run any free clinics up in here, you don't? Okay, this is our final stop. Over there, you've got the last Nova, where Bog serves watered-down drinks at ridiculously exorbitant prices. And right here is the most important place on the entire station, the Reckoner's Core, run by the incomparable Shinya Voss. Another new Rook, Neva? I can't believe Delgado still lets you recruit, given what happened with the last one. You mean Austin Rape? It's been taken care of, all right? I don't like loose ends, and this rook is the one who tied it off. Perhaps next time you'll try to be a bit more discerning regarding your choices. It's far more cost-effective. Yeah, yeah, love you too, darling. Anyway, Shinya handles our lifeblood. The money. We call him our Reckoner, but if you ask me, he's actually a pain in the ass. And Neva will slit your throat if she thinks you'll bleed creds. Go to hell, boss. Take care of our new friend here, or I'll find a way to pull the pin on that little party popper in your chest. Anyway, Shinya will get you set up in our system. I've got real work to do. Once you're done, head upstairs and I'll introduce you to the boss. Time for a proper introduction. I am Shinya Voss. The official reckoner for the Crimson Fleet. And since Neva so thoughtfully mentioned it, yes, this is a bomb embedded in my chest. And no, I'll never know the meaning of the word humble. In fact, I find Delgado's idea of a security measure to be quite empowering. Glad you approve. Obviously, betrayal isn't taken lightly around here. Since I oversee the bulk of transactions and maintain all accounts for the fleet, I'm a prime target for information. Should our enemies capture me or I grew any semblance of a moral conscience, you might consider me the greatest threat we have. For Delgado, the bomb grants peace of mind and a certain degree of safety. It's why he's the boss. Of course, I'm not the first Reckoner to bear a bomb under my rib cage, but Delgado was smart enough to continue the tradition. Now, let me get you set up. A moment while I convene with the core. Thanks to advanced modifications even Eugen would envy, I can interface directly with our mainframe and the Galbank network. This allows me to move and clean credits faster and more efficiently than any run-of-the-mill cyber runner. There, you're done. All you need now is Delgado's blessing, and you'll be one of us. None other than my chest and arm modifications. I am but a simple man. Is the interview over now? Can we get back to work? The perfect segue into my final subject. Thanks to our relations with contacts across the galaxy, we always have a steady stream of jobs available. I've granted you all the necessary permissions to access these listings at any time using the computers that surround the core. If Neva's chosen wisely, we certainly will. Now, I believe that covers all I have to say, so you can run along to Delgado. Take the elevator to the upper level, 
You should be able to find your way from there, I hope. I don't have time for you right now. All right, listen up. You can all stop complaining. Atrium to cargo bay doors have been repaired. Oh, and you're welcome, Nev. Hit up the mission boards at the core. Or manipulate 
manipulate my voice to change anything I've said. I will hunt you down and kill you. In front of everyone. Do you understand? I, uh... I understand. You have my word. about your arrest. Oh, my arrest was spectacular. Definitely one for the record books. Your sea security sent an armada after our little fleet of ships and picked us off one by one until the remainder of us made it to the wheel. For a listener's benefit, that was the star station in orbit around Voli that you destroyed just before your arrest, correct? You see, that's what they'd have you believe, but the truth is much less sinister. There was a firefight on the wheel when they tried to bring us in. We hold up, but you see security unleashed hell. The damage they caused was catastrophic. We only surrendered so we wouldn't die when the station exploded. Well, the UC says you set demolition charges to try and cover your tracks and make your escape. That's their story. You'll have to go with your gut on what you think really happened. Anyway, they took us in and tossed us into the lock. That lovely resort they opened on Suvorov. And you were imprisoned there for how long? Well, it was supposed to be for life, Gail. <laughs> but I ended up serving two years before I decided I'd had enough. Is there any particular reason that you started the riots that eventually led to the worst prison break in United Colonies history? Yes. I'm quite proud of that, actually. I honestly didn't think it would go as well as it did. As for the reason, well, it's simple. The UC were treating us like animals. The conditions in the lock were ridiculously bad and no one cared. That's why they stuck us on that ice ball in the first place. Out of sight, out of mind. Your escape caused the deaths of many that were stationed at the lock. Some would brand that as a bit dismissive for what you're describing as a protest. If you were simply advocating for your fellow inmates, why didn't you just go through the proper channels? And what the hell was I supposed to do? Send a strongly worded letter to my duly appointed representative? Wake up. The UC only responds to actions, not words. In my mind, there was no other choice. You know what? L let's move past my time at the lock so we can get to the point of this goddamned interview. Need something?
So, now that we are all here, it's time to get down to business. The two of you are the only rooks that have made the latest cut. The rest, well, let's just say they won't be joining us ever again. Neighbors willing to put her neck on the line and vouch for you. Which means you've got what it takes to join the Crimson Fleet. If dealing with the Ragana was at the limit of your capabilities, then you have a serious problem on your hands. You are already in too deep to quit. And I can promise you, it only gets more difficult from here. All right, let's get started here. When you sign up with the Crimson Fleet, you're in it for the long haul. No one quits. No one retires. The only way out is death. You stay loyal or you pay the consequences. Fleet before friends. Fleet before family. Fleet before yourself. Of course we have fools. If you think the Crimson Fleet was built on a lawless dream, think again. Our influence, our money, our respect comes from meticulous planning and every last soul in the fleet following my orders to the letter. That is why you need to learn to place the fleet before everything. Boss. <laughs> Good. You're getting it already. I like that. Can we get on with this? I want to get drunk at the last Nova. I'm impressed. That is the first intelligent thing you have said this entire time, Mathis. Since you two seem so eager to move forward, let's get to your next job. Pack your cold weather gear, Rooks. Where we are going, you're going to need it. Oh, God, don't tell me you're dragging him down to Suvaral for another one of your little initiation runs. Ten Johns to the surface, twelve dead rooks. You think by now you would have given up on that goddamn campfire store? Crix's legacy is no story, neighbor. We've got fresh eyes in the fleet. And if these two want to impress, they're going to help me search those ruins. I hope you're right, Dale. That new code we grabbed for the lot cost us a ton of credits. And a decent captain. This initiation, as Neva calls it, is your chance to see where it all began. On Suvorov with Jasper Crix. Crix led the riots that gave birth to the Crimson Fleet. And if his legacy is still out there, we're going to be the ones to find it. What? Were you expecting a goddamn graduation ceremony? Think I'm just going to slap a skull on you and send you on your way? Make no mistake. You are being tested all the time. Every job you take will be under constant scrutiny. And Neva? Oh, she's just waiting for you to screw things up. Of course. Where else could I find such a perfect location to weed out any rooks who'd be wasting the fleet's time? Through a bit of luck and a hell of a lot of cash, Neva was able to get her hands on an access code to the inside of the lock. This will be the first time someone from the Grinson fleet has set foot in there for... Well, since Grix left the place behind. It has been frustrating being this close to potential clues but not being able to find a way through those prison walls. Before Crix left the fleet, he left a message talking about a major score, one that would set up the fleet to be a big player in the settled systems. Somewhere down the line, they started calling it Crix's legacy, and everyone who's tried to find it has wound up empty-handed, missing, or dead. If we're gonna beat those odds, we'll first need a lead, and I would wager we will find one on Suvorov. Dale's leaving out the best part. That this whole search is based on a handful of words on a very old slate. Crick's left a lot of big talk on that recording. And not a lot of facts. Some of us believe in it more than others. <laughs> Don't listen to her. When we get our hands on Crick's legacy, the fleet will be operating at a completely different level. We will become more than a match for UC Sistef.
You forget the UC is still licking its wounds from the colony wars. They don't have the capability to mount a full-scale assault. And if they were foolish enough to attack, we would have the manpower to push those pendejos right back to Jemison. If we have Grix's legacy. Listen to the words that I am saying. The legacy is real. You will find that out in due time, provided you're willing to put in the work. Nothing worth having ever comes easy. Hey, I've done my fair share of treasure hunting. Never panned out. But I'm sure this time is gonna be different. Exactly. Now you're beginning to understand. Okay. Enough discussion. We have got a lot of work to do. To that end, the next stop is the lock. I've had Jazz feed the coordinates into your ship's computer. Since Mathis doesn't have a ship, he's going to ride with me. I'll see you down there, Rook. Don't keep me waiting. station on the key until the heat dies down. Then it's back to raiding and pillaging. Never do a job unprepared. Need supplies, you hit up the depot. About time you got here. I told you you were wasting your time, Del. I'm not taking anyone's side at anything. All I am doing is watching the both of you and waiting for one of you to do something as stupid so I can put you on the ground. I hate surprises. Just do what I say, and you might even walk away from this without turning into a goddamn ice sculpture. And Mathis, I am running things around here, so keep your mouth shut. You got that? <laughs> Fine. All right, listen up, because I am only going to go through this once. We are here to dig up any info about Grix's legacy. We are not here to scrap for loot. Whatever you pick up, don't think, don't get creative, bring it straight to me. Before he touched off the riots, Creek spent time behind bars at the lock. If he cooked up any sort of a plan about his legacy, the trail has to start here. Oh, I don't know. I was really hoping for a huge sign on the wall saying, Crix's legacy clues here. Do I have to spell everything out? Look for data slates, notes, terminal entries? If you wrote a poem on a piece of toilet paper, I want it. So simple, even a rook like you can't screw it up. Hold on, no scrapping. How the hell am I supposed to make money around here? All right, that's enough. If either of you want to fly with the Crimson Fleet, then you need to follow one simple rule. When you're on a job, you do exactly what I say. No questions asked. If that doesn't work for you, just say so, and I will leave you on this ice ball without a ship. You will be dead within hours. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, keep talking, wise ass. Throttle it down, both of you, right now. Oh, and there's one more thing. Your little friend can tag along until we get to the outer doors of the prison, but I will be damned if I'm letting them inside. So, I'm doing what? Freezing my cojones off? Oh, thanks for that, Delgado. I'll remember this come your birthday. We have a lot of ground to cover between the landing area and the lock, so let's get moving.
Here we are. The place where Jasper Griggs laid the groundwork for finding the legacy, and eventually, the Crimson Fleet. The Lock. About a hundred years ago, this icebox was a maximum security penitentiary for the UC. Originally, they just tossed prisoners onto the surface of Subarov. But after people cried foul, they built this place. Cozy, huh? Around five years. Rumor says he started planning his escape the moment that he arrived. There is a huge difference between being a coward and being careful. So both of you, watch yourselves. All right, let's keep moving. Standing out here isn't doing us any good. This ID card cost a small fortune. Let's hope it pays off. <laughs> we are in. Let's go. trying to survive on the surface. Not much better. Even with the heating on, this place looks like a goddamn dump. Now you know why the prisoners got fed up and looked to Griggs to lead them out of here. And that's how the Crimson Fleet began. Yeah, yeah, we've all heard the story. It's not a story, Mathis. It's history. Remember that. Now, keep your mouth shut and your eyes open. I bet these things are crawling all over the place. 
Yeah, and their bodies probably heard us firing from about a kilometer away. Hallelujah. Must be a nest. Yeah, and their bodies probably heard us firing from about... Hey, how about that? Guess you're not so stupid after all. <laughs> well, look at that. One firefight and the two of you become best buddies. Now let's see. Looks like we are inside some sort of prisoner transfer area. But everything is locked down tight. Since you are such good friends, why don't you and Mathis head up to that control room and see if you can get some more of these doors open. Just great. The hell are we supposed to do now? The plan? Who gives a shit about the plan? Let's face it, we're on our own now. You think he rigged that collapse on purpose? No. No way. I get that we're down here trying to prove ourselves. But I don't think this is what Delgado had in mind. Funny you should mention that, because staring at that wall of ice gave me an idea. We used this opportunity to take out Delgado, and at the same time, make some serious credits for ourselves. Yeah, we're doing this right now. Or maybe we should wait until the next time we're on an alien world, and separated from Delgado by an icefall. We bide our time, and when the moment's right, we hit him with everything we've got. Even the almighty Delgado won't stand a chance if we work together. Whoa, whoa, hang on. G g give me a second to explain. Let's pretend for a second Delgado's correct, and there's information here about Crix's legacy. Once we get rid of him, we'll dig up the garbage ourselves and sell whatever we find to Neva. We'll be rolling in credits. Pfft, hell no. Come on, we both know anything we find here about the legacy is going to be a dead end. If Neva wants to spend the rest of her life chasing ghosts, let her! We got more important things to do, like spending all of our money. No, 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 no way. Listen to me. We're going to be handing Neva leadership of the Crimson Fleet on a platter. She'll be thanking us for getting rid of Delgado. I mean, come on. I'll bet you a month's share that he's never been this vulnerable. It's perfect. Are you crazy? I'm no rat for Delgado. I'm busting the ass to become one of the Crimson Fleet captains just like you. And in case you missed it, that icefall trapped both of us in here. Unless we find a way out, no one's reporting anything to anyone. Ever again. Playing it safe, huh? I can respect that. 
But you better have me back when I make me move. Now, let's find a way out of here. <laughs> I guess that's one way through.
should talk when we get into the tower. So have you thought about what I've said? Don't act stupid. I'm talking about off in Delgado and getting paid by Neva for the info on Cricks. Well, maybe we won't have to. You saw it back there. Those things, whatever they were, they've probably ripped him to shreds by now. Did the job for us. And if they haven't, we can still handle the job. We just have to get our hands a little dirty. Wouldn't be the first time, am I right? You didn't see. Those aliens were tearing through them like tissue paper. It'd be a miracle if any of them were alive. Saved us a hell of a lot of trouble. You've got a point. All right, I'll follow your lead for now. So, now that we've made it to the guard tower, what's our next move, genius? Been in a few slams yourself, I see. Okay, I'll follow your lead. Your pack's too full. You'll slow us down!
where the fleet started. It's history, man. Huh? What are you planning to do with all that stuff? things are crawling right behind the walls. Ooh.
freaky. Picking through the trash, we might as well grab some goods. Time to put some things down. happened about a ship carrying a fortune and credit. I know it's usually bullshit, but he seemed to have details. After striking up a conversation, I found out the ship was a Galbank transport named Legacy that went down in some remote system during the war. This is exactly the score I've been waiting to find. Can you imagine how angry the prisoners were when they rioted? I would hate to have been one of the guards. He'll help the mining details slip into the utility closet and ventilation room. That's where we'll dig. Not up, but through. Right to the armory. Carter mentioned that security keeps rotating codes on all the terminals in the lock. So we'll have to coordinate this carefully. For now, we'll continue using his locker in the showers area as a drop point for the code to the utility closet. I swear, I By this time next month, I should be on the dump and uploading those creds into my account. Delgado was right. Briggs must have hit the Galvan transport and stashed away the money.
Confirming that the latest code to the utility room is 48611071. The mining crew tells me it'll take them a week to cut through the ice. So I'm giving you that long to square your end of the plan. We get out of the mining armory. I'll be mining us out to draw. When you hear the fireworks go off, get your ass to the shuttle bay. We'll get one shot at this time. Play our cards right. This gets us one step closer to that fortune that went down with the legacy. You report any of this to the guards. Well, you know what will happen. this place out. Well, well, what do we have here? Uh, give me a sec. This sort to of come in handy. All right, let's keep moving.
Looks like this was the warden's office. They built the office right next to the shuttle bay. Oh, quick as Bullshit, Delgado. I help plenty. Is that Mathis? Tell him to shut up. I will deal with him later. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Now all we have to do is find a way off of this planet. Um, let me see. Ah, uh, here we go. I'm looking at schematics for the lock. And I don't think there's a way to get you back to the surface from there. But I can open the outer doors to the shuttle bay and let you fly one of the shuttles down there directly up to the key. According to the schematics, there is an emergency evacuation exit I can use to return to the surface. Then it's just a quick run across the ice to my ship, and I'll probably still be you to the key. Don't worry about your ship. I will send some people down to get it. You just get your ass on that shuttle and get out of here. I don't care if you are finished or not. I want that information about Grixis' legacy in my hands. After that, you can come back down to Suvorov and dig through the snow to your heart's content. Okay, let me see. One of these probably opens the door. Shuttle bay activated. Initiate the access process. Please stand by. Yup. That's got it. Might take a while, though. Those bay doors have not been opened in almost a century. You have done a hell of a job, Rook. We will talk when you get back to the key. Why the hell did you lie to Delgado about me? You didn't do all this work alone. Hey, come on. I was just looking out for both of us. I could have caught you out of the deal, but I didn't, right? Look, um, about all that killing Delgado stuff, why don't we just forget about everything that I said? You know, like it never happened. <sighs> Thanks. <laughs> I promise that you won't regret it. Now, let's get the heck out of here.
you need all that junk. I can't stand what you did, but the mission has got to come first. Right now may not be the best time to talk to me. I'm done talking with you. Missions are always a healthy source of income. Is something wrong? Looking to make a deal? What'll it be, friend? Buying, selling? The Trade Authority takes anything and everything. Where do you think most of our goods come from? Business on the key is like no other. It's the sole reason I'm here. For the credits. There are a few who share that sentiment. You'd think a successful business relationship would change their minds, but a few will always see me as an outsider. Regardless, as long as the fleet has goods to push, the Trade Authority will always maintain a presence on the key. Let's just say I've done my fair share of questionable activities in the past. With the credits I amassed, I gave the Trade Authority a sizable donation in exchange for a clean slate and a stable job. So, here I am, at your service. I left a similar lifestyle behind when I joined the Trade Authority and never looked back. A lot of the rooks here see freedom and lawlessness, but that's only if you don't get caught. True freedom is not having a bounty on your head with every cop and mercenary out to get you. I'm sure we can work something out. Your credits are always good at the Trade Authority. La 
astronaut who smiled at me funny? If you're doing any lifting later, I can find you. you so long it's about time i was about to fly down and loot your bodies not now neighbor well you said you found something hand it over that's it just one slate after losing so much of our crew it better be a map with a big red x on it I'll be damned. Legacy wasn't referring to Crix's fortune. It's the name of an actual ship. A Galbank transport probably loaded with credits. Never heard any stories about a Galbank ship going down. And even if it had happened, it would have been picked clean years ago. No, neighbor. Think. If Galbank covered it up, and over time, the location was eventually forgotten, it wouldn't be on anyone's radar. Okay, this changes things. Now that we know what we are looking for, we have to narrow the search. Because they would be rolling in so much cash, there is no way they could keep it quiet. It's like hitting a jackpot. Not to mention they'd need someone with Shinya skills to keep the crypto tracing on the currency clean. And as far as Galbank goes, I doubt they would bother. Their bean counters would be too busy weighing the loss versus recovery costs. Now, the legacy is out there. Just waiting for us to find. I can feel it. I'm sure he did not have a choice. People would kill to get a crack at a score this big. I know I have. Let us start with what we know. It was a Galbank ship, which means the company is going to have records of where it went down. Neva, weren't you working on a deal with Rokov? Something about a big wig charity event on one of Trident's Starliners? Are you serious? I've been working on that gig for three months. That's my score. Ay, Dios mio. Will you shut up about your score and think for a second? That Starliner has a Galbank VIP suite aboard. Which means... Come on, Neva. This isn't hard means a gal bank exec will be aboard. We grab their credentials and get ourselves into the gal bank archives in New Atlantis. Holy shit, that might actually work. I'll send a message to Rokov right away. Pack your bags, Rook. You're going on vacation. And since you've earned it, take this gun with you. It might come in handy when Rokov screws everything up as usual. It's not what you're thinking. It's more of an office than a bank vault. Once you're inside, you'll be able to gain access to one of their computers and find out more about the legacy. Rokoff is... <laughs> well, he's Rokoff. A real pain in the ass. He used to run with the fleet until we kicked him out. Lately, he has been using his long hauling skills to captain a Starliner for Trident gives us a contact within the company. He has been trying to get his foot back in the door with us for years. 
but I'm not ready to let him in just yet. Maybe you can use that to your advantage. Good, because that is exactly what you are going to be doing. Neva and I are too well known to walk around the Starliner without being recognized. If Trident Security spotted us, it'd be over. I need you to board that ship, make contact with Rokov, and get me those credentials. <laughs> I see what you are getting at, Rook. And don't worry, I would ask the same thing. Just be sure to get those credentials. Anything else of value you find on Rokov Starliner? It's all yours. You know what? I'm gonna leave that entirely up to you. If you think he's come through for us, you can promise him he'll get paid. But if he gets in your way, then you take him out. You'd better. Oh, before you leave, I wanted you to know that I took what you said about Mathis into consideration. And I've decided to cut him from the fleet. Honestly, I'm surprised he made it off Suvorov in one piece. Because you're the one that finished the job. You followed orders and you put your neck on the block to get that data to the key. As far as Mathis goes, I'm sure you had to drag him through the lock and prevent him from doing something as stupid. We'll see. That's it then. Next stop for you is Rokov Starliner, the Siren of the Stars. And remember, Rokov does not need to know anything about Griggs' legacy. For now, it's just between us. Now get out of here. Hey, Rook, before you head out, I need to have a word with you. Meet me at the last Nova after you wrap things up with Matt. I want to talk to you. Thanks to you, Delgado's cut me from the fleet. Well, you know what? You better get your own fleet, because I'm coming after you. Oh, I see. You think you're some kind of big shot, is that it? I'm gonna show poor Mathis a little mercy now that you're Delgado's best buddy, huh? Well, guess what? Your generosity is getting me kicked off the key. And that means you better watch your back. I stayed to give you a message that you better start looking over your shoulder. You'll never know when I'll be right behind you, ready to pull the trigger. I'm gonna miss you, little guy. With all your venom and half-baked ideas. Bring it in, hug. Now get the hell out of me way! I told you, we're done. Now get the hell out of me face.
This, this is their bar? I've been in Shifty and Jones and Beer. I just expected a few dead bodies here and there. Those crabs ain't gonna steal themselves. Maybe. We haven't decided. There you are. All right, look. I've been lining up a score with that asshole roll call from the Siren of the Stars for months. I'm not about to let a payday slip through my fingers. So guess what? You're gonna finish the job for me. Seems to me, instead of trawling... My score involves a one-time event being held aboard the Siren of the Stars. If anyone finds out the Crimson Fleet's aboard that Starliner, the event will be canceled, and I can kiss my payday goodbye. There's no way I'm gonna miss this window of opportunity. I'm about to tell you, so shut up and listen. Rokov's been tipping me off about some kind of bullshit charity event that the Siren of the Stars is hosting. At the event, they're gonna give away something called the Earth Savior Award, which is worth tens of thousands of credits. So it's simple. While you're on the siren, swiping those gal bait credentials, I want you to grab that award and bring it to me. No, Dombrowski's only aboard to use the gal bank VIP suite, so he can catch a free ride at the company's expense. I'm sure he'll be there partying with the other spoiled brats. I guarantee he doesn't give a crap about what's going on in the event. From the pictures I've seen, the award is set with 12 blue diamonds and covered in gold filigree. If I get jazzed to take it apart, I can turn it into a hell of a lot of cash. And best of all, the components become untraceable. And I'd prefer to have the money that award's worth in my account. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. Look, you can make all the jokes and excuses you want. But if you don't come back with the ES award, I'm gonna deduct it from your pay. Either way, I get my money. How much you walk away with is in your own hands. Got it? So if we want to see any juice at the end, we gotta play ball. Message received. All Rokoff does is feed me information. If I ask him to lift a finger, he gives me enough sob stories to fill a freighter's cargo bay. If you want my advice, leave him completely out of the loop. Otherwise, it's gonna cost both of us some credits. Then it's settled. Good. All right, Rook, we're done here. Now, get your ass to the siren and bring me my boots. Because that's exactly what you are. A rookie, a newbie, fresh me. Beneath all of that inexperience, I'm sure you have an actual name. But honestly, no one gives a damn. So get used to hearing that word. Until you earn your stripes, you're a rook to everyone in the fleet. We'll talk later.
pestering the captain, right, Cora? Looking to start something? Cause I'll finish it. Yeah? Is Samina seeing anyone right now? The patience, I mean. I gotta sort of him. I ain't never getting used to that. Need something? So, looks like we got... Once again, I'm... Like Neva said, you need ship parts? Repairs? I'll hook you up. It may not be wider, but it's not on the books, if that's what you're getting at. I can guarantee your ship will be in good hands. So if you're looking for an upgrade, let me know. We got the best selection in the settled systems. Illegal, unregistered, recalled, we sell it all. No questions asked. No, 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 no. You buy from me, you're worry-free. I can't have my customers getting caught now, can I? That's bad for business. Anything that keeps the UC and Free Star Rangers off your tail is a must-have in my book. Just let me know when you want to talk business. No, but just remember, I don't work for free. All right, let's see what you need. Either put up, shut up. 
do what Commander Ikande says, and we'll go far. Heard you boarded the key. You can't imagine. Yo, back. So how did it go? Then things are moving forward. Perfect. Nice job, Rook. I was certain we'd fool Delgado, but never. She's a sharp one. Overcoming her scrutiny is no small matter. Did you discover anything worth reporting yet? Legacy. Why does that sound familiar? Wait a moment. Are you telling me Delgado may have actually located Crix's legacy? <laughs> You're kidding. Crix's legacy. I always wondered if that damn thing was real. Judging from the fact that this data involves both Crix and legacy, I'd say it's as real as it gets, Ranger Cole. I suppose it's possible, sir. Intelligence picked up a bit of chatter on that subject recently. We assumed it was some sort of tall tale or a story to attract recruits to their cause. Well, we can solve that little mystery in about 10 seconds. Let me see what we have here. Nope. There are no records of a gal bank transport named the legacy in the database. <laughs> I think Delgado's trying to manipulate you. What do you think, sir? I think there's no record because gal bank is hiding something. Delgado's no fool. If he risked his own neck to get that information, then he must be on to something. We have to take this seriously. What's your next move? Clever, Delgado. Very clever. If I were in your place, I'd be trying to do the exact same thing. We can't let Delgado get his hands on what could potentially turn out to be the largest haul of credits the Crimson Fleet's ever seen. Maybe I should head out to New Atlantis, sir. I could press the Galbank execs for information. Get ahead of everything. No. Let's allow this to run its course. We have our agent here feeding us information. I think that's good enough for now. There's more to this than just finding the location of the transport. Jasper Crix was clever. And for some reason, he never got there. Because the Crimson Fleet would be a totally different adversary and Crix wouldn't have disappeared years ago. Even if they hid the money with that damn human computer Shinya Voss, our forensic accounting people would have found that data. No, the Crimson Fleet are in dire shape right now. They haven't seen that much currency, well, ever. It's imperative that you do. If the Crimson Fleet gets its hands on a transport full of currency, it would be disastrous for the settled systems. I need you to do whatever you can to bring us more information. And for God's sake, don't kill anyone on that Starliner. You're both dismissed. I never appreciate the sacrifice you've made. Go. Excellent. Let me have it, and I'll upload it to our database. It's amazing that all this romantic nonsense about Crix's legacy really just amounts to a rumor Jasper Crix picked up in jail. It just goes to show you how a tiny rumor can snowball into a full-blown fairy tale. Anything else? All right. Keep up the good work. We'll provide you with information, but any inventory or ship services, it's best you get from the fleet. It'll help you maintain your cover and also give you an idea of how the fleet's operation works. Two reasons. First, Commander Akande is playing this operation extremely close to the vest. That means keeping prisoners under his own roof until this is resolved. Second, this is an undercover mission. For our safety and yours, we need to keep these prisoners out of the spotlight. They're pirates in every sense of the word, but they've managed to get more organized under their current leadership. That makes them especially dangerous, but Hopefully, it makes them a little more predictable, too. We'll be here if you need us. Oh, hello. I don't think we've met. Are you by chance new here? Wait, 
I know that name. You, you're that dangerous Deramorph Slayer everyone is talking about. Well, don't worry. I'm not scared of you. My godmother was a member of the Strikers gang, and you're not even half as scary as her. <laughs> My name is Javanta. I'm an ensign with the maintenance and robotics team. And just between you and me, I don't think you're dangerous. <laughs> Do you? Are you really? What a coincidence! I, do you miss home at all? Oh, I need to go back the next time I get shore leave. Anyway, it was very nice to meet you. If you want to talk some more, I will be here. <laughs> oh, yes! And we have a new prisoner in the brig. <laughs> it's really sad the fleet couldn't just leave him be. And having left a toxic situation to come here, I can relate to wanting to escape. Although, no one's tried to have me killed, so... Ha! Huh. It's a good question. It was... what you'd call a... minor moral crisis. <laughs> I wasn't happy with my old job at Drone. I, I felt like my life was on an assembly line. Eh? Everything was about profit, and nothing had any real meaning. But then, it occurred to me... If I'm so miserable, I could just leave. <laughs> so one day, I just... did. <laughs> Sistef is far from perfect, but our goal is noble. I can sleep soundly knowing my work will be for a cause that is just. Oh, I'm part of the maintenance team that makes sure the vigilance is operating smoothly. On the robotic side, I take care of the Model A's on the ship and make sure they're treated with respect and dignity. They are people, after all, just like us. See? I knew there was something I liked about you. Machines are very dear to me. Think of it this way. How can we expect a robot to fight by our side if we won't fight for their right to exist? So I always do my best to treat them as my equals. Oh, I have so many questions. That is not enough time to ask them all. But I won't ask about your vanguard duties, as I'm sure you're tired of people asking. Instead, I will ask you a very simple question. <clears throat> Are you a morning, afternoon, or night person? Me too! <laughs> I love waking up bright and early. Do I? <laughs> I guess that's a compliment. Everything is just better in the morning. The food, the air, the coffee. <laughs> but the thing I like best is the quiet. When I can look out into space and see the whole galaxy is asleep. When it's that quiet, the only noise you hear is from the vigilance itself. In fact, we keep each other company when the world is too busy snoring in their beds. It makes it so the mornings are just for us. Goodbye. 